Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 16 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between update model and try update model function. Please watch part 15 before proceeding with this video. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the code that we have been working with in part 15. Let's make a simple change to this create post controller action method with an employee controller. Now, I want to move this condition from there to here. And let's format this code properly. And to do that, select the code and press Control K D. So what are we doing here? So after we, you know, invoke this update model function, we are checking the model state. Okay. Let's quickly run this with this change. And let's navigate to employee create controller action method. Okay. Now. Let's not fill any data and then press this create button and let's see what's going to happen. Now, look at the change that we made. You know, we are creating a new employee object and then we are invoking this update model method, which is going to, you know, update that model object for us with the data that we are posting here. Now, look at this. We are not filling any data here. Okay. So when I click this button, look at what's going to happen. Now we get an error. It says the model of type business layer dot employee could not be updated. And that is because if you look at the employee class, you know, look at this to the employee object, we are binding the data. So if you look at the employee class here, this date of birth is of type date time. And date time, if I right click on that and go to definition, look at this date time is actually a structure, meaning it's a value type and it's a non nullable value type. Okay, and then when we submit the form without filling any data, date of birth will be null. Okay, and this property of the employee object, you know, date of birth is non nullable property. Okay, meaning we cannot assign a null value. So that's the reason why it's crashing. So let's make it nullable date time data type just by adding a question mark. We discussed about nullable data types in C sharp video tutorial. Okay, so with this change, let's go ahead and run this application once again. And let's navigate to employee controller create action method. And again, without filling any data, let me go ahead and click on this create button. Look at this. We get a different error now. You know, it says procedure function SP add employee expects a parameter at name which was not supplied. Now, if you remember, we have a stored procedure. So SP underscore help text. And the name of the stored procedure is SP add employee. So this is the stored procedure that gets called and then it's complaining that the stored procedure has got a parameter at name and for that parameter we are not supplying a value. Okay. Why is that? Because if you look at the parameters of the stored procedure here, all of them are required parameters. Okay. Since we are passing, look at this, if I don't fill any data and then submit this form, we are passing a value of null. And that's why the stored procedure is complaining that I don't have a value for that parameter. Okay, to make these parameters optional, all I'm doing here is, you know, setting them to null. Let's do that for all of the parameters, name, gender, city, and date of birth. And then let's alter this stored procedure. Press F5, so command completed successfully. Now let's go ahead and run this once again. Let's navigate to employee controller, create action method. And then let's submit the form without filling any data again. Now look at this. I get another error. Object cannot be cast from DB null to other types. And look at where I'm getting the error. We have the error in employee business layer dot CS file in at line number 34. So let's see what we have at line number 34 in employee business layer dot CS file. So if I press control G and then, you know, go to line 34, Look at this. This is the line. And 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 look at this. When does this property get executed? When we try to load, you know, the employees from TBL employee table. Because what actually happened is, you know, let me actually select the data from the table. And look at that. You know, we have a new row inserted into this table. And look at name, gender, city, date of birth. All of them are null. So when we actually submitted and we actually submitted this form, you know, the insert has actually happened, but it inserted a blank row. Why? Because we didn't fill any of the data here. 
but then after we you know perform the insert what is this controller action method doing it's redirecting the user back to the index me uh, index action and what does index action do index action is actually retrieving all the employees from the database table and then trying to display them in this index view but then when we try to retrieve employees you know look at what we are doing we are executing this SP get all employees stored procedure which is going to retrieve all of the employees and then we are looping through each row and then converting you know assigning name to name gender to gender city to city and look at this we are assigning date of birth to date of birth but we need to convert that to date time why is that because you know when you use the string indexer to retrieve date of birth out of this reader object you know you're converting by default its object type but we need to cast that to date time before we assign it to this date of birth property okay so when we are doing this conversion you know this date of birth is actually null and we are using convert dot to data to date time function so you cannot convert a null object to date time so that throws an exception okay so how do we correct this error it's very easy to fix this error so obviously what what is the error say so let me click on create once again look at that you know again the same error but we should have another blank row inserted into the database table look at that now and what does the error say it says object cannot be cast from db null to other type so here you know this is returning db null so all we need to do check you know before we execute this line if it's db null if it's not db null then go ahead and convert that otherwise don't do that and to do that I'm going to copy this if RDR of date of birth is db null and for that entire expression I'm going to use a not condition so if it's not db null only then go ahead and try to do the conversion okay with this change let's go ahead and run this let's navigate to create action let's click on this button look at that I have you know the third blank row is inserted and then we have this blank um, you know name gender city date of birth now let's say you know I want name gender city and date of birth all of these uh, properties of the employee object to be mandatory because I don't want nulls for any of them to be stored in the database so how do we do that it's very easy to do all you need to do is decorate you know the properties of this employee model object this is what we are using as the model object you know in, in MVC so I want name gender city and date of birth to be required fields if that is the case all you need to do is decorate these properties with required attribute we'll discuss more about model you know data annotations and these attributes in a later video session in detail but for now understand that to make this you know particular field as required all we need to do is decorate that with required attribute and this required attribute is present in uh, you know system dot entity framework um, entity framework assembly so we need to add a reference uh, to entity framework assembly within this business layer project now we already have a reference to entity framework assembly in our you know MVC web application but not in the business uh, layer project so we need to add a reference to that and to do that we can make use of the new get package manager so go to tools and then select li library package manager manage new get packages for solution and within that check for you know whatever packages that are installed um, on this um, you know for this solution so it's still retrieving that information so we have entity framework which is already installed so let's go to you know installed packages which should say you know entity framework is already installed but then look at this I have this option here manage so let me click on that button and at the moment a reference to entity framework is only added to MVC demo which is our MVC web application but not business layer so I'm going to select that project and then click on OK so that should add a reference to entity framework you know from our business layer project as well alright so that should be done now so click on close so we have entity framework there now this required attribute class is actually present in a different namespace so let's go ahead and import that system.component model 
dot data annotations and then let's say I want to make name you know a required field so I'm just using a required attribute there along the same lines I want to make gender also required city required and date of birth required okay so with this change let's go ahead and run this and see what's gonna happen so at the moment in the database table view we have three blank rows and let's navigate to employee controller create action let's click on this button look at that the model of type business layer dot employee could not be updated and notice where we are getting the exception we are getting the exception when this method is invoked update model okay now remember we have made name gender city and date of birth fields of this employee object mandatory by decorating that with required attribute so obviously when this update model is called you know it inspected the incoming values from the request and obviously they are null and update model throws an exception when there are model validation errors now instead of using update model let's go ahead and use try update model and see what's gonna happen so all I'm going to do here is instead of using update model I'm going to use try update model and let's run this now and see what's the behavior so now I want to navigate to employee controller create action method click on create button notice that I get the messages here the name field is required the gender field is required city is required date of birth is required okay so now I don't get an exception so that's the primary difference between update um, model and try update model so update model throws an exception if validation fails whereas try update model will never throw an exception and another thing to understand here look at this this try update model actually returns a boolean you know meaning true or false if it is successful in updating the model it returns true if it is unsuccessful it will return false you know when it try to when it tries to update the model and if there are any validation errors you know this is valid property of this model state object is going to return false as well so in which case if it returns false we know that this piece of code will not be executed and look at what we are doing we're executing this line this line gets executed return view so the end user stays on the same page and then he has the opportunity to correct these validation errors and then resubmit the form okay so now for example if I enter some data there let's say a male CTL and date of birth let's say for example that one and click on create look at that you know the row is inserted as expected okay now so that's the difference between update model and try update model the similarity is both of these functions are used to update the model with the form values and perform the validations okay now is it mandatory to use update model or try update model function to update the model no the answer is obviously no because in the previous sessions we have seen you know how to achieve the same behavior now I can simply pass an employee object here instead of creating my employee object and then using my you know using this try update model or update model functions I can simply pass employee object as a parameter to this controller action method and look at this I'm checking model state dot is valid so obviously this object is going to receive the posted form data and then if there are any validation errors you know this model state you know uh, is valid property of this model state will return false and then the user stays on the same page and the user get to see the validation failures let's go ahead and run this and see if it's gonna work as expected so if I navigate to employee create I don't fill any data click on create look at that the behavior is exactly the same but now we are not using update model or try update model uh, you know but still it works the same way all right now so obviously the next question is so if you if if we can achieve the same thing without using update model or try update model then why do we need to explicitly invoke model binding you know by calling these methods what's the need what do we achieve by doing so so if we want to limit on what can be bound then explicitly invoking model binding can be very useful okay if this is confusing at the moment don't worry we'll be talking about this in a later video session in detail on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.